Welcome fathers who are looking to inspire their kids and become fearless. This is the Become a Fearless Father show and I'm your host, Klaas van Oosterhout. I'm a father of two boys, husband and entrepreneur. This show is created to teach you how to take control and enjoy the most difficult job you've ever faced, fatherhood. I'm going to keep it real and share real life experience. A heads up, there is no magic pill. You will have to put in the hours, sweat and tears to achieve victory. Are you ready to improve your health, wealth, relationships, knowledge and become the hero your family needs you to be? I know you are. So get your pen and paper ready and let's become fearless fathers together. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to class to become a fearless father and I have the pleasure and honor to introduce you to Patrick Rhea. What's going on my friend? I'm, uh, I'm having a happy new year, man. I'm, having, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be here, class. Uh, thank you for inviting me on. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to, 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 to share some useful stuff with your audience today. Yeah, man, it's going to be great. You're one of the few, as everybody knows, of course, I always try to interview and invite dadpreneurs. And in this case, Patrick is not. However, I was so amazed by his message and I thought, what you are doing is absolutely worth sharing with entrepreneurs out there because I think it really will help us. And we will go into that uh, right away. Um, after, of course, first, I would like to hear from you a little bit about your background story and what you've been up to and, um, yeah, all that good stuff. Class, it would be my pleasure. Um, so, guys, I, I'm I'm sitting outdoors at the moment. Is in a, I, I, uh, I'm in London, guys. I, I'm from Ireland. I'm in London. Um, I've been here like eight years, and and I've had just I've had like a really incredible journey. As in, um, what I had was, I, I I met I met one of my mentors at like 25. He was one of the best body transformation coaches in the world. He, incredible guy, Lazo Freeman. Really interesting, and. Um, he wanted someone to help get his message out there. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, 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 that's kind of where my skills lie about helping people get the word out there and building communities and just like really connecting with people. So, so, so we had, we, we had investment from one of the richest ladies in, in the UK. Uh, she's fantastic, very huge heart. And, and she wanted to, she wanted to help us get our mission out there. And, and, and what it was, it was all about helping men and women, you know, fall in love with their bodies and, and fall in love with exercise. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we ran that for four and a half years. And, and we actually only just stopped working on it uh, 12 months ago. Um, but in, in the meantime, you know, we, we trained hundreds of personal trainers about behavioral change. And we, we won a national award for innovation, which was really cool. Nice. Um, I was thrilled and, and we became, um, class, is the sound okay? Can you hear me? Okay. Good, and, and, and we, um, we became strategic partners with the UK active. So that's like a national body. Uh, gov is it like a nonprofit government, uh, body for helping the country get fitter, more active, more healthy. Nice. So, um, like, so all, 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 always been into that. Um, personally, like I was a world championship rower. Uh, but, but, but I broke my back and I, I, I kind of, I, you know, I've been, I, I've had a few tangles with adversity. Um, like, like guys, all of you guys out there, you dadpreneurs is in, you know, you might feel like the deck is stacked against you sometimes. And, and trust me, you know, it is hard. It's, it's hard to, to juggle everything. And, and, you know, guys, fair play to you because you're juggling even more than me as and I, I'm just looking after my own ass, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so so yeah, th 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 that's what I've been doing. And over the last 12 months, um, it was, you know, s s sometimes the, the, the world isn't right for your message, guys. As in a, and, and with our company, the, the, the world wasn't ready for it. Um, so I've decided to do it on, on a smaller scale. And um, so what I'm doing is I'm helping out businessmen um, and CEOs and, and guys who are looking after their companies to um, break some of the really unhelpful limiting beliefs that they have that, that I don't get the time as in that, that, that I can't do this and, and just help them do it, help them do it. And, and, and it's really easy. And uh, so, so, so that, that's what I'm working on at the, at the meantime. And, but 
but uh, also I'm massively into philosophy, guys. I'm, I'm massively into. I, st- I, I, I didn't tell a class of this yet, but um, I study Vedanta, and it, it's like the intellectual tradition of Hinduism, and it's basically mm-hmm. the, the, the the tagline is the art, skill, and technique of living. So just how to get the right perspective on things in life, and and um, because you know, guys, as you know out there, when your kid is born, you know it's not all about you anymore, and and it's about someone else, and you've just got that higher perspective on life, and this philosophy has been it's it's been incredibly useful for me um on seeing things the right way and it's brought a lot of happiness to me and and um and i'm I, i'm big into meditation and and i just came back from a little meditation retreat i was in class about so yeah that, 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 that's what i've been doing for the last few years in london and um yeah class is you know you know is it, anything i can anything that you think would be useful for your listeners please ask yeah, man, I got tons of questions, um, but usually <laughs> I keep telling everybody that I interview. I got questions, but I never <laughs> get to ask those questions because we just go all over the place. Uh, but that's that's a fun thing. I like to keep it mellow um, and just go where, where the conversation takes us. Uh, you mentioned meditation, for example. That's one of the things that I want to talk about um, as I think it's something that dads um, – don't really do at least most of them that I've seen so far they're not really into it and when I talk to them about it that's because it's a huge part of my my morning routine uh, they usually you know they they that part they kind of those off so um, I want to go into that as well to for you from your perspective you sharing with us you know what the benefits are why you do it how it has it helped you etc and we'll get to that later. Um, first thing that I want to talk to you about, because you just mentioned something, and that's one of the things that are written down as the most important, is adversity, right? So for me, for example, I started with, with like planning 2019, all excited, ready to go, and so far, nothing has gone the way I wanted to go, um, except being featured in uh, Russell Brunson's uh, ad for one of his new programs he's coming out with, which is really cool. But other than that, congratulations, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. But other than that, so far, uh, it's <laughs> today. Um, I like my things the way they are. And I'll, uh, today was one of those again that I had to go shopping. I go to my supermarket that I always go to, but the bloody thing is closed. They're renovating for a month. So I'm like, Mah. So the stupid things sometimes can mean big adversities, and I want to talk to you about it. <laughs> what is your approach towards adversity, either small or big? What's your system? How do you come over it? How do you get back on track? Oh, that, 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 that's, that, that's a tough one. Um, a lot of these things... So, so when I was 19 years old, I I broke my back. Mm-hmm. I broke my back. Um, I broke L3, 4, 5. Wow. I dislocated the L5 in the sacrum. I'm, I'm one of 30 people in the world who've ever done that. Um, and I walked again in six days. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I was probably back in the gym working out five, six weeks later. So... So there's one of those things that that um that people say they oh how did you do it how did you do it like you know as in um you know I I guess when our backs are against the wall adversity is just you just got to do it you know, as as in as in as in because you guys are out there you know you got your kids as in you you got to you got to make money you know you got to put food on the table you just sometimes it's not a choice it's not a choice and 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 you got to move forward and and um it's, it's it's just it's just one of those things where where you you don't want to you don't want to wallow too much it's like as in feel the feeling mm-hmm. but, but, but don't identify with the feeling you know as in as in i'm feeling down right now i'm feeling sad i'm feeling angry but but it's not i'm angry i'm sad i'm down because that becomes quite corrosive. So, mm-hmm. so w- w- one of the big things about adversity is um, it's checking in with your feelings, sitting with the feeling. Because a lot of guys they 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 just try to rush through it or they try to bottle it off. Mm-hmm. Um, you 
you know, is in, and this is one I got from a mentor and, and, and lots of mentors actually, it's just sit with the feeling, feel the feeling, be present. And then, and then, and then it can pass through. Cause guys, you know, what, 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 what's emotion? It's e emotion, energy in motion. You sit mm -hmm. down and if you're trying to stop that energy coming through, it just gets stuck there. And um, you know what happens makes you feel really crappy about it. And be okay to feel that feeling. And it's, it's guys, it's hard as in uh, like in, in the West, as in um, us men, we're very intellectual. We're very in our head. And, but um, one of these things for your sanity, you, you got to feel the feeling and uh, just let it pass through. Otherwise, um, you know, you're setting yourself up for very unpleasant consequences later. Mm -hmm. Because, guys, um, one of those things is, and you know it, you know it, you, we don't get away with anything in this life. You know, we, is in, um, every, everything you got to pay for it at one point. You know, there's no free lunch. And when I'm in adversity... You just want to feel the feeling and just let it pass through and then you can get on with your day. You know, like as in guys, a, a really, a really helpful exercise because, you know, if you're a dad entrepreneur and, um, and you know, we all have negative thoughts and people saying, oh, you're being negative. It's like, no, no, that, that's cool. That's so cool to be negative. Um, but, but don't identify with negativity, feel it. But, but, but let it pass through and an exercise, you know, when I was starting my new business only a few months ago, was I was full of fear, I was so fearful. I was like, oh, it's not going to work out. It's in, it's in a, so-and-so has tried and failed and blah, blah, blah. But what I did was I, I would write my fears down every day in the morning, like five fears, right? I said, I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to make that sale. I, you know, as in so-and-so, they're not going to get back to me. That is just like, and just, it's really, you know, when you, when you can put your fears on paper, you find that they're very petty. They're really, like, there's like, there's, it's very rarely that, that you got a good one that you're like, Oh wow, that's, that's a real one, you know? Um, and I would sit down and, and I would sit in those fears in the morning and I, and like, you know, isn't it's, I, I think of it like, you know, the UPS guy is coming to your house and, and, and he's got a message for you. And he said, it's, it's really urgent and, and he's not going anywhere until you sign for that package. And, and guys, I look at that as, that's what it's like with it, your emotions. People, you know, as in, if you've got to sign for that, man, if you, because he's going to be ring, he's going to be blowing up your phone. He's, he's knocking on your door. He's going under the back of your house. He's throwing pebbles at your bedroom window. He's doing everything he can to deliver that package. And, and, and that's what it's like with our emotions. And that's why you, you guys out there is in you to get through adversity. You got to sign for it, man. You got to sign for it. You feel it. And I guarantee you when you sign for it, it goes through the system so much faster than you ever would have anticipated. And like, and like so much faster than you not trying to sign for that package. Yeah, I, like does that make sense class? Yeah, it does. It does. I actually like that metaphor. I actually want to add to it that, um, he, he, the, the UPS guy also comes at, at the most unexpected moment, right? <laughs> Sorry, Cass, the UPS guy what? That, that he comes at the most unexpected moment. Just like your emotions, right? You can think like, okay, I got everything organized. I got, but you didn't deal with it, but you still think like, okay, it's fine. And then all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, bam, it comes right back. Just like, I mean, the post office never comes at the time that i would like them to come they always come in those 15 minutes that you actually going out with a walk for the dogs right <laughs> it's like really and and in and, and class as in what i'm saying to you and the guys is that you know the only parts of our day when we do have control is the beginning of the day and the end of the day everything in between best of luck man you know best of luck uh but if you know you can anticipate you can do your best to anticipate some of these things you know and, and, and sign for it, at, you know, as in get all your packages delivered at the end of the day or at the start of the day. And, and then, um, and then the rest of the day is your, and then if, and then if the real fear is realized, you're like, ah, oh, well, I felt this already, no big deal. Listen, I'm not going to go through the motions twice, you know? Hey, sorry for the interruption. I know you're really enjoying the show. Just want to make sure if you're liking this information, please subscribe and um, press the like button. And also, go visit becomeafearlessfather.com. You get the opportunity to share your biggest challenge at the moment as a father. And it gives me the opportunity to try and help you overcome this. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, man, I, I love it. Thanks for sharing that. So, 
the the reason why I reached out to you because I, I love that long message that you put in regards to your revelation, and I want to talk to you right away because I thought about you um, like in the beginning of the year because of course everybody's doing all their Facebook ads and they're uh, on YouTube saying lots of videos with ads and blah blah blah, and and I think all dadpreneurs are, are being. Uh, you know, overrun with the, you have to hustle, you have to grind and blah, blah, blah. And, and I thought immediately about you. I'm, I'm so glad that I got you right in the beginning of the year. So we can help that out of the way because, um, well, why don't you explain a little bit, uh, what message I'm talking about, um, and what your experience is now, what, what the message is that you would like to share. So, um, because that's that, this is the reason why I invited you. I think your message was so clear and spot on that I think all dadpreneurs need to hear it. <laughs> oh, Jesus, in fact, class, now you've built it up. Uh, I hope I can measure up. Um, so, so class is speaking about a message I wrote maybe uh, you know sometime before Christmas, and and honestly, it was the most viral message I've ever got as in I've, I got over 300 likes, like mm. 200 comments, uh, podcast invite from class as in a, like a bunch of, and I got a bunch of private messages about this and it was just something that, you know, as in, guys remember talking about checking in with those feelings as in, um, so I was, you know, it's, it's, it's December, you're a dadpreneur, you're having a tough time, man. You know, as in there's Christmas presents, you got to buy that, you know, the, the kids, there's this, there's that, there's the other thing coming up and, and everyone, like, and you, you also got the, the mindset, oh, maybe some people are holding back. I'm, I'm buying something before Christmas because blah, blah, blah. And um, this photo, on my, you, know, you know, Facebook memories where the, where the memory of something comes up. And I saw it five years ago. It was a picture of me and Gary Vaynerchuk. And so I, I met Gary Vaynerchuk five years ago at the very beginning of my entrepreneurial journey. Mm. And um, Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, he, he, he's a great guy. He's a, he's a really smart guy. He's very helpful. Um, however, you have to take what he says with a pinch of salt. So, so on, on that day, I, I just got struck in the heart. And, and, and it brought back um, all the feelings of, like, it's, it's tough, man. It's just like where everyone's just around you saying, hustle, hustle, hustle. If you're not... If you're not winning, work, you know, more, you know, work 25 hours a day, eight days a week, you know, as in, as in, it's like, it's just all these messages preaching it, you know, you're not good enough, you know, as in, um, and, and, it, and it can be lots of things and it can be, you know, it can be a sucky business model. I, you know, I didn't, I know I didn't always have the best business model and I've only gotten it right after five years. Mm. Um, but, but it was, it was true that, you know, as in, I, I, it's a toxic hustle culture, a toxic hustle culture where we are meant to feel like losers if we don't measure up. You know, like if if we want to work just like ten hours a day instead of fourteen hours a day, it's like, oh man, you know that's why you're behind. You're not you're not working those fourteen hours a day. You know, and like if you're working fourteen hours a day, it's like why you're not working sixteen hours a day. And if you're working 16 hours, you're not working eighteen hours a day, because you all hear these stories that these guys are doing it and Gary Vaynerchuk's on six in the morning to midnight and, and like, and you, you know, sometimes as, as a, as a, as a newly minted entrepreneur, you're impressionable. Like, you know, you could be whatever age in your life, you know, as in you can be whatever, in your life, but you're a new kid, you know, in your new kid on the block and, and you absorb these ideas that are, you know, prevalent and strong and and they sound sexy they sound sexy because there's part of like you know there's there's a funny thing as i saw on facebook it was like you know if you're a dadpreneur you know you gave up a 40 hour hour job uh 40 hour a week job to to get an 80 hour a week job you know so, um, just, just because you couldn't hack doing 40 hours a week so like amongst the people who are entrepreneurs, we are self-selected as like, we do like to work hard just because, because we love to work. We love to work. And, and then some guy out there, this guy with a $400 million company, he's telling you that, um, that you got to Like, if you want to have a 400 million pound dollar company, you got to work 18 hours. That's, that's where the real money's at. And, 
And if you don't hit that critical mass of at least 16 hours, you're, you're no good. You're no good. And, and that's what a lot of people reacted to. You know, just because I'm speaking from the heart, as in um, I'm one of those people who had, you know, that I had a, you know, still, I still work on a, a superiority, inferiority complex mm-hmm. where, um, you know, I'm looking up to like Elon and Zuckerberg and all these guys and, and compare, foolishly comparing myself to them because these guys out there, you know, we all, have, we all have different gifts. We all have different gifts. And um, sometimes business models are not our gift, you know, and, and for many years it wasn't my gift. is in connecting with people. I, I got a gift there and, and helping people see things in a, in a positive way. I'm, you know, I got a gift there, but in terms of making money is in, I'm not gifted. I am not gifted as in, you know, I've made money, but I'll work hard for it. And, and I've had to train and I've had to get lots of people helping me. And the message that some of these guys are putting out there, which is in, it's sometimes not nuanced enough is like, you got to do you, you have to do you. And, and a lot of being a dadpreneur is that journey of self discovery of, of where you're like, well, what does work for me? Um, and until you find like, you know, who you are, as in, you never really get the, the business thing going for you, you know, mm. as in, um, as in, I, I had to, you know, it took many years, you know, I was a young man, 25 as in a, you know, and I bet some of you guys are dads at 25. Um, and you've done a whole bunch more than me or some of you have done less than me. Um, but it, it, it's about figuring out who you are, how you work, what are your gifts, and like, who do you need to combine with to, to make the most of this? Mm-hmm. Because um, if you just think it's simple down to hours worked per day, you're just never going to get where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or you're going to get there. And like, honestly, I have I've a great amount of compassion for the guys I help. As in I, I have really smart guys. And, but they put so much into their work that their health deteriorates, like really, really deteriorates. As in, you know, one of my clients at the moment, he's got a company, he's got 85 people working for him and, and he's just having a new baby on the way. And he's a, he's an amazing person and he helps people so much. But physiologically, you know, he's doing that. He's doing the 18 hour days, you know, he's doing them and it's killing him, you know, and, and I'm showing him other ways to live and I'm, I'm addressing his health and, and your health will deteriorate if you just don't, you know, if you don't figure this out of how you work best, because, um, you know, guys, I, you know, my whole company was a behavioral change company teaching personal trainers how to get people to fall in love with exercise in their body. Mm-hmm. And on my 28th birthday, um, two days before my 20th birthday, I had chest pains. I was like, what the hell? You know, I, I got pains in my heart. Like, and, and I, 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 guys, I don't mind saying it. Like I broke down tears as in, I was just like, I was so ashamed of myself. I was so ashamed of myself. I was like, you are not congruent. You are not like, you're doing this all ass ways, you know, as in you, like, and I started looking after my health and started eating right again. And, but it was like the shame of that. And, 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 you know, while intellectually we can get over these things quite quickly on a body level, it, it took me quite a while, you know, as in, because, uh, cause guys, the body hears everything the mind says. So the body was hearing, Oh, you're lazy. You're not working 16 hours. You loser. You know, you're only working 12, 14 hours. What like, of course you're not succeeding. And like, but like objectively, um, my brand was quite big as in, um, I won national awards in the UK as in like, and I'm not talking, I'm not talking about like, you know, dipshit awards. Sorry for, sorry for my speak for my French there. I'm not I'm, like, as in, uh, I partnered with the biggest, best company in my field. Um, and I did this all like at 28, which I think is, you know, relatively, you know, it's a good age. Um, and I had no business background and, I didn't grow up with any business background and, and I did all these things, but I felt like a loser. I felt like such a loser because of these guys saying, oh man, you ain't hustling, you know, as in, as in, and all these assumptions of 
where you should be of like it's and it it's tough guys and like you kind of got to steal yourself that like because like i'm not gonna say you know don't work hard you know like work hard you know but like from the vedanta from that philosophy came that sense of proportion you know you, you got to have a sense of proportion and you have to be able to listen to your body and um, and sometimes you got to say you know is this business model you know it's like hard work sometimes is does this business work for me is this is this where i'm meant to be it's like sh- should i even be an entrepreneur you know and, and sometimes you know i question myself on that and 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 the the ultimate answer to that is like if you can't see yourself doing anything else, like I, I can't. As in, I, I'm, I'm unemployable, guys. Sorry, <laughs> I'm unemployable. As in, I, I just have to, I have to do this. And if you're like me, where you're like, you just have to do this. this is the only thing you can do. No, go, go do it. But, but sometimes you know, um, you just got to connect it to something that's more realistic. Because you know, so I was looking at Gary Vaynerchuk. I was like, I'm trying to take over the world, man. And um, and I just, you know, you get the they talk in the startup game about the big hairy goal and and i'm like yeah i want to transform a million people by 2020 and like you know you, and you put these huge pressures on yourself yeah. and, and and sometimes it can be just unrealistic because guys some of us have gifts to do that and and if you know you can do that and like it's been it's proving it as in you know by all means but but some of us like you know you know, for me, as in what I realize, like I, I, I help people on a more local level, but but the people that I help, they can act on a more global level. Mm-hmm. I'm a guy that, that stands behind the big shot, and and empowers the big shot, like isn't like the guy who's able to, oh, you know, what did Archimedes say? You know, as in if I had to leave her long enough, I, I could I can move the world. Um. There are people out there who are more leveraged than you. You know, there are people out there, they've got more skills. And when you know who you are and, and, and what you're about, you can, you can do that. You know, you, you, can, you, you can just be you. You know, like as in, you know, what's Kanye is saying, you, you, you know, I just, I'm just doing me, you know. Um, and I, I really took, you know, I took a lot of inspiration from that. Like as in, you have to see where, where you're at. And, and coming back to that post class, saw like that, that was just what I said is and like, and, and I, and I held my hands up, you know, mea, mea culpa, you know, as in, I was a dumb kid, you know, I, I was naive. I didn't know, you know, as a lot of people said, yeah, man, you should, you just gotta, you know, actually fans, people were overwhelmingly supportive, but I mean, there was a few like, yeah, well, you didn't really get his message, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but, but you know, as in, I, after a while I tuned out and, and he, he nuanced his, his message, became more nuanced later I, I, as I learned. And, and I lifted my hands up and said, listen, yeah, I, I was a dumb kid, you know? And, and you know what? There are plenty more like me. There are plenty more impressionable people who um, are not secure enough in themselves yet who are going to listen to these guys and, and try run through that brick wall. And, and I, I guess one of the big things was... Um, Self-compassion, guys. Self-compassion is in a, like, I, I didn't, like, until last year, to be honest, I didn't know what compassion was. I didn't know what gratitude was. I didn't know any of those things. And I know, like, your listeners, like, you might say, oh, well, this sounds all fruity and stuff. But, like, listen, at the end of the day, if you're an NFL player, if you're J.J. Watts, you know, you know, he's an absolute monster for the Pats. He doesn't work out 16 hours a day, guys. He doesn't. He does his workouts, and then he goes home. And he looks after himself and he rests and recovers. And then he goes out and does it again, you know, the next day, mm. and I, you know, and that was one of the things that, that I kind of learned that, um, that even the best guys is in a, they go home, they recover, they look after themselves. And, 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 and I, I had a, I had another realization. And there was a, there was a guy in my life. He was immensely talented, like, a genius guy. He was a he went to Columbia University in America. He was a Fulbright scholar. Um, he was a, he was a genius, guys. He he was a total genius. Um, but he died at uh, he died at thirty nine years old. He worked sixteen hours a day, and he had a heart attack in Ukraine trying to do a big energy deal. He's meeting with the oligarchs, and 
you know, like the, you know, the billionaire guys. And, um, and he's a friend of mine and, and he died at 39. He died at 39 because he was working by, by the book. Like, and, and I'm not saying that, that he hurt, he knew who Gary Vaynerchuk even was, but he was working that life, you know, but, but, mm-hmm. but he was, he was doing him like, guys, you know, he was doing him. He, he was just some crazy guy. Like he, he got the Fulbright scholarship, went over, lived in Russia, made a company, sold it, did all sorts of crazy stuff. Like as in worked for the CIA, like, you know, he's, he's a nuts guy, but I mean, he died. He's 39 and he got put in a box. Yeah, like he, died, like, he died alone in a hotel room in the Ukraine. Six, 7,000 miles away from family. Wow. And, you know, I, I, so I've seen where that lifestyle goes. And, and you know, guys, I, you know, I hope you're just saying, Jesus, you know, I'm not crazy like that guy. But it's, in a, it, it's, it, it's, it's just building in that, that self-compassion, building in that thing because... Otherwise, you know, you're not going to go to distance. And, and the guys you're saying they're doing the 18 hours, they don't do it every day. They might do it once in a while or, or they'll do it for maybe, I don't know, maybe the craziest guys will do it for 12 months. But they're no, they're no one's doing that every day. And they're, and they're selling this dream of what they're working all this time. It's like, like a, a buddy of mine, um, so I, like, I know a lot of high-end entrepreneurs. and He, um, he sold a building for 110 million pounds and, 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 you know, he pocketed a lot of that money, you know, it isn't, he paid back his meshes. Do you know what? He goes out to Ibiza, he parties, um, he, he goes to bed at 10 PM at night. Um, he gets up early. He has, you know, he looks after himself, you know, and, and I need these successful guys, like the really successful guys, they look after themselves, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I agree. I just changed something. I want to share with you real quick. I always, um, two years ago, I used to work for a company and I was miserable because I couldn't be an entrepreneur at that moment. Uh, because you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to make that money. And I always, there I used to say, work hard, play hard. And I just changed it into, from what you said into work smart and play hard because playing in the end i'm reading a book from a guy from the uk it's called shine and he keeps saying that as kids we play and as adults we do not play anymore and and that just kills us Uh, we need play just as much as we need breathing and that kind of stuck with me so thank you for that i'm going to use that more often to share with uh, with everybody out there Uh, work smarter and play harder instead of working harder <laughs> so thanks for that I really appreciate it I can also understand that people of course uh, because after all those the, the people like Gary Vaynerchuk they have a great message they motivate a lot of people in the end and um, what you mentioned like we're in such a position that we do not know who we are yet so we follow them why you mentioned that I really I find that very powerful is we need to know who we are and follow us Listen to those people, take what you can use, but continue to follow your path. If you go off your path, you just, yeah, you're, everything suffers. I've noticed that, so I really appreciate you sharing that. So you've mentioned that several times, like, know who you are. Um, there might be people saying, like, yeah, okay, I know who I am. But how does somebody really find out who am I, what's my path? Um, what's you know, who, 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 who's me? How do you go about finding that out? So I, 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 I've got a few things I, I use it as like, there, there, there's some simple questions, right? As in, and, and, and then there's, and then there's experience and, and I, I'm going to walk you through that. Um, what were you good at when you were a kid? Well, what was that thing? Like you just like, it, cause I was looking like, you know, what was this? What's your superpower? Well, what's that thing that you're really good at? Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I was a coach since I was like six years old, you know, as in, I, I was, I was always a coach. I was always a coach. Um, so like, I was never, I was never a businessman. I was never a businessman. I like my buddy next door, like my, one of my oldest friends, he raised like $2 million for his uh, tech startup. Right. I never, like, I looked at him doing the business. I was like, Oh my God, I could never do that. Um, so, so, so I definitely learned business so I could do coaching. Um, so 
you know, why did you, why were you good at as a kid? And, and why are you, why did you want to be when you were 14 years old before everyone said, no, you can't do that. Or, or someone said, ah, oh, that job, that won't pay, you know, as in, um, because a lot of people, we talk about like a liberal education, like a, a truly liberal education is one where you doing it for love of the subject. Okay. And, 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 now, and now we have everything is like, it's okay. They, 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 they want us to do everything for a job, you know, because uh, guys, especially over in America, you know, it's in the, with what I call the educational industrial complex. Um, they keep loading you with debt and, and, mm. and, and, you know, and then to make it a narrow kind of way that you can repay that. It's like, it's, it's, it's tough. And, and I think in America, there's a lot of social pressure, uh, you know, with that educational thing like that. If you're not a college graduate, you, you're, you ain't nothing, you know? Uh, which is sad because it's not true. It's really, really not true. Um, and then um, one of the things is, I, like, I, I love personality tests. As in, I really, I really, as in one, one that I really like, it'll cost like 10 bucks or maybe 12 bucks. It's called the Strength Finders. Strength Finders 2.0 by Gallup. And uh, one of those, it just, it just focuses, focuses you on your strengths because guys, like, yeah, just like once you tune into that and like you tune into your gifts, because guys, you're all gifted. You are all gifted out there. And, and um, it, 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 it's, it's to connect with that. And, 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 then, and then like it, there's, there's also meditation. Um, so I, I, was, I was having thinking, you know, just and sometimes you, some parts of your mind, it, it knows. It's like, you know, you know what, like I, I, I mentioned on deep down level, you do know, you know what you're good at. You do know it. Um, and, and last week I, I had a particularly deep meditative experience. And I said, you know, so, you know, cause it's a popular question. Like, well, what are my gifts? What are my gifts? <laughs> and like, and, I, and like going into them, I'm like, come on, dude, you know what your gifts are. Like, you know, well, where have you been until now? Like, if, if you don't know what your gifts are. And, and, and it said that it's like, dude, I don't have to tell you this stuff. You know what it is. Listen, you can write, you can speak, you can get people to see things with a new perspective that's helpful to them. So like, so, so I say meditation is, is definitely like asking yourself is, because I, I know that, you know, I know that, you know, um, and then so borrowing something from Vedanta and, and, and the, the Hinduism, they, they talk about, um, Maya and Maya is the concept of the illusion. So, so Maya simply means not that. So like, so, so I did, I did trial and error and I, I came over to the UK and, and um, I, I, I got a great job. Is this company called um, King? And you got class, you know, Candy Crush, you know, little, little jewel yeah, switching yeah. game. So yeah. I, I, used to work, I used to work in the marketing department and, and I used to sit maybe 15 feet from the CEO. And the CEO, he made $700 million when they sold that company. And like, so so I, from day one in London, I was sitting in the room with some very extra people some very special people okay um but i was on a spreadsheet all day like as in i was on like i was at the the cutting edge of facebook ads um like this is this is 2000 and in 2011 we were spending one million pounds a month on facebook ads wow like like we were one of the top 10 customers in the world at that time um, and you know, like, and now King are, they, they sold for $6.7 billion to Activision. Um, so like I, you know, it was a, it was a cool place to be, but it was like, that, that ain't me, man. That ain't me. You know, as in, cause, cause I, you know, guys, I, I'm an English grad, English and French literature. So I'm like, like I've got a com completely commercially useless degree. <laughs> um, like, and, and you know, I didn't want to become like, I'm a teacher, I'm a coach, but I didn't want to become like an English teacher or a French teacher. Um, I, you know, I, I learned French to get French girls, not, not for the, not for the, the literature. Um, and it's like, the, 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 that ain't it. And, and then, and then um, I worked in marketing for the Royal Opera House and, and like 40% of the West End. So if you guys don't know what the West End is, it's like Broadway. So I, I mark, I did marketing for 40% Broadway. And it's like, this ain't it, man. This ain't it. This ain't it. As in, um, 
And then I found my mentor, Lazo Freeman. And he was like, dude, you want to do this? And he said, he's just like, when blah, 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 which was like, like if someone had just written down my dream job, my dream job, he's like, do you want to do this? He's like, I got, I got investment from one of the richest, nicest ladies in the UK. And um, I'm like, yeah. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, guys. I'm forgetting something. I'm forgetting something. So for, for 10 months, I hated that job with the doing the Broadway marketing. I hated it so much. I, I interviewed at 10 different companies. Uh, like I interviewed at Google, Facebook, and then a lot of crappier companies. Um, and they all said no. They all shot me down, right? Until I got, I got in with this um, social media agency, like one of the best in the world. And, and, um, and I'm there for maybe two weeks, okay? And they're like, hey, Patrick, uh, can we speak to you at HR for a moment? I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. They just want to get my feedback of, uh, of what's going on. And I said, yeah, how do we say this? Uh, this isn't working out. <laughs> So, guys, I've been looking for 10 months for a new job, right? And I've been telling myself, it's just the company I'm in. They just suck. They just suck. <laughs> and I get there and they're like, yeah, you're, you're a sales guy. You're not a data nerd. We wanted a data nerd. I was like, oh, dear God. I was like, give me a few days to prove myself. Give me a few days. And I couldn't. I couldn't. But, but I, you know what, guys? I never felt more alive. I never felt more alive trying to prove that. You know, just... Because it was, you know, it's in role on that, you know, that the 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 big the big boob of uh, the monthly paycheck, you know, and it's it's hard to get off the boob, you know, it's like it's it's, it's tempting. There's a lot of milk there. It's great, you know, it's it's secure. <laughs> but but um, but I was ejected. The world said no. That's not your path, dude. Get off. Like as in, I was rejected from that. It's like you are not meant to be here. Mm -hmm. And then and then I meet my mentor, and he's like, dude, you want to do this with me? And we got funded and, and then we did my dream job. And then we like, we ended up doing like three different companies in one, you know, as in which guys don't do three different companies when it's a terrible idea. But, but like, it, it's kind of how we became winning national awards for innovation because we would make a company so fast. It would make a lot of money, but it didn't have like that long shelf life on it. Like, mm -hmm. like we weren't good at business models. We were good at making money, but not, making business models. Our business model sucked. And we did a thing called the Influential Gentleman, which was for entrepreneurs and, and helping them become the best versions of themselves. And, and, but the most, the, the most longest sticking thing was the, was the educational provider for the personal trainers about teaching behavioral change. And uh, it was the most incredible years of my life. And there's ups and downs. And, and uh, one time we ran out of money and we had no money for six months. And uh, I like, I remember having to do cold calls, like 70 cold calls a day, um, mm -hmm. just, just calling up people and like, like 10% of the time getting told to F off, you know, as in, uh, <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. And, and sometimes you think it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. And so I thought, like, I thought that the first company that we came up with would be the dream one. That's it. That's the one, you know, it wasn't it. It wasn't it. And then the second company, I, it wasn't like, that wasn't anything that I never really wanted to come to, but it created a passion and, and, it, and it, it created my skill sets. Um, but like, that was never really it. And then, then we did a meditation business. That wasn't really it. And then, and then what we wanted to do was, so one of my mentors, she created a 45 million pound a year business from scratch. She's a badass, like a complete badass. And she was like, guys, you know what? Um... They've been talking about that thing you're talking about for like 10 years. So, so guys, we were at like the government level. We were super high level with the, like in talks with people. And she was like, yeah, you know about those things you're talking about? That, that never worked out in the past. You, you should probably not do it. And like we closed our company down the next month. And she said, how about do it like this? You know, AKA something I'm doing right now. And, and, uh, it was so liberating. It was so liberating. It's like, but there was like, guys, I went through a bunch of different companies. This is like, what I'm on now is it's my fourth, it's my fourth company, essentially. Um, man, maybe even fifth. It depends how you count them. So, so it's like, 
It ain't that. It ain't that. It, and that's, so some of the things I was doing, they were too airy fairy. They were too airy fairy, and that's why the business model sucked because there was such a niche interest for that. It. It's like it was. It was. It was like what I wanted to do. Is what selfish I want to do. And guys, if you're a dadpreneur out there, you want a mass desire. You want like as in weight loss. That's what I do now. There's a mass desire around it, and and I get to do all the the work I love to do in consciousness and 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 change people's perspectives, but I get to do it in a safer realm, you know, where, where people, people pay for this stuff all the time. And, and guys, with your dadpreneur business, find stuff that people already pay for. As in, um, cause, cause guys, you know, I've done all the trying to make new things and tell the world that the world doesn't know what it's talking about and, and the world really needs what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, because, uh, you know, it's hard. Like, you know, Listen, and there's, there's guys out there who will revolutionize things, but, but I mean, it, that's not, it's definitely not all of us. That is, and, and, um, and when you do you, you'll find your way of revolutionizing the world. And, and guys, trust me, I'm finding it. It's like, um, and if you guys want to follow my, me on Facebook or join my Facebook group, one of the big things I do is I use like memes for getting through to these busy guys because They've got these really unhelpful beliefs that they don't have time, but like everyone's got time for a meme. So I, I deconstruct people's beliefs through witty memes. Well, you know, I think they're witty, you know. <laughs> um, these witty memes where, where, we, where I can just deconstruct people's unhelpful beliefs. And, and I'm having fun. Remember we are talking about, you know, as in what was class saying, you know, work smart and, and play hard. You know, I'm playing hard at work because I'm, I'm having fun doing it. And, and I'm doing me as in it's humorous, it's playful. It's all the things that, like, if I wasn't before, because I, I wasn't playful before, I was very serious. And, but I wanted to be playful. And, and now my work is in, like, I don't know, maybe 40% of my marketing, it's just being playful. It's being entertaining. And it connects with people, you know? Um, and, and then some of my work is speaking from the heart and and. And, you know, going back to class, he's asking, well, you know, how do you know what you want to do is, and how do you do you? It's, it's part of listen to your heart. And like, and guys, my, my heart was a lockdown for many, many years. So it's like, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. But if your heart is open and you're able to listen to that, great, follow it. As in, because your heart will tell you where you want to go, but, and your head will get you there. But it, like, I, I was so much in my head. My head's like, oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. And guys, there is no shortage of good ideas. But it has to be, what's the good idea for you? Because there's a million things that are good ideas and your head can do, all, can do them all. And like, that's why people have these middle-aged crises is because they've said, oh, that's a good idea. That makes money. That's secure. That gets me status. Um, it gets me a great partner, blah, blah, blah. Um, looks after my kids, but it doesn't do me. It's not me. And, and, and that's why people are, there's a lot of pain in the world because of that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you have to kind of go through that filter and, and you know, what, what is commercially viable, but which is also doing you. And, and did I have to compromise? Yeah, I did have to compromise. But, but some of the things, like my old things, weren't the right thing to do anyway. And, and guys, like, that's, that's, that's what you got to do. You got to find something that, that makes money, but, but you do it in your way and you do it in, some, in a way that's special to you. Because um, because when you do it like that, it's then um, you can't fail. Because like if you look at Elon, he's doing Elon. He's just being himself. He's so unapologetically himself, mm. and that's you know part of why he succeeds. And but you know, guys, he's got a great business brain. He's got he's got an incredible business brain. But you have to see that, and and maybe you know, maybe not everyone is meant to be an entrepreneur, and they're not. And and there's a lot of pressure on that to be an entrepreneur like because that's the cool thing right now but there's some of you guys out there like me in class who are like that's all i know how to do that's all i know what to do and and if that's all you know to do is like okay well that's that's one step to to knowing who you are mm -hmm. um is, is am i making sense there class is that a yeah, absolutely i also love the fact that you just mentioned uh, just be unapologetically you i mean i think that's very powerful uh which with, with social media and everything, it just looks like it's less and less what people are actually doing. Um, 
It's just like, you know, uh, that's what, one of the things that fathers really struggle with is you see all these pictures on Facebook of happy families and it's like, <laughs> but at the same time, you have no idea what happens, you know, besides that, maybe you're <laughs> banging each other in the heads. You, you have no idea. We just share everything that's like, <laughs> but, you know, the, uh, I call it the American smile. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> We have no idea what, what happens besides, and, and we have to keep realizing that, you know, I share everything. I mean, if I have a shitty ass day, I still go on Facebook every single day, and I'll share it. Like, today, I went on, I said, look, today so far has been crappy. <laughs> it's shit. And, but that's what it is. I can't be always like, oh, yeah, my kids are fantastic. No, they're not. Sometimes you just want to <laughs> grab them by the neck and just throw them out the window. As a, Of course, I'll never do that, but... You know, as a, and I'm sure every father has that at some certain point. It's it's not always just roses, moonshine, and, and beautiful moments. <laughs> um, the last thing I would like to talk to you about, and you've mentioned it already a little bit, is is meditation. So I meditate every single day, different different kinds of meditations. Um, you you've mentioned a couple of things. I like, for example, the you know you meditate, you sit, and then you just ask the question, and you have the answer yourself. So I really appreciate you shared that. But can you share first of all, um, you know, what's the reason for you to meditate, and what are the benefits for people? Why why should why should somebody meditate? Okay, so guys, is um, a lot of you guys out there? You're hearing all about meditation right now, and. And guys, I'll be the first to say that I thought meditation was dumb. You know, I was, I was like, that's dumb. As in, uh, I ain't doing that. That is stupid. As in, no, no. As in, uh, I will do my intellectual knowledge. I will read my books. As I don't need to meditate. And, and you know, it depends on your makeup as a person. And, and you may not need that, you know. Um, but I'm just going to just zoom out a little bit. In Vedanta, we talk about that there's... The, the, the makeup of people is, 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 is three ways. It's, it's part intellectual knowledge based. It's part, um, it's part heart based and it's part action based. So if you're a super intellectual, maybe you don't need to listen to your heart so much, but you know, I guarantee that a lot of you guys out there, you got a heart, you know, and if you're friends with class, if you're watching class, like, I know you got a big heart. So as in, if you like, so just from that, like, th th that's why it's necessary. Th how I got into meditation, um, my business partner, like, is one of the, the next iteration of our business got into meditation. Um, so this is a guy called Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's, he's amazing, guys. Look him up. And his whole thing is about the science of placebo. So he found ways of, like, he freestyled. Like, he, he's, like a, he's like a DJ. You know, he took hypnotherapy. He took um, uh, neurolinguistic programming. He took cognitive behavioral therapy. He took um, he, he took mindfulness. He took visualization. Um, he took Kundalini yoga. He took all of these things and he he DJed them to be this amazing meditation where you could heal yourself. Mm. Like and guys, like I, I, I'm going to tell you like a real cool story just to inspire you. So I, I've got a meditation group back in London. We meet. Uh, every second Saturday of the month. Um, this lady, she hadn't seen in her left eye for five years. And when we did our meditation together, she got her eyesight back in her left eye for two days. Which, guys, I think that blew my head off. Like, you know, for me, that was, you know, that, that's a goddamn miracle, you know? Um, did she keep her eyesight? No, she didn't keep her eyesight. But, like... To get eyesight back after five years, like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, so that's what this guy was talking about all the time, which I thought was complete BS. I was like, ain't no miracles. What are you talking about? You're crazy. Um, and, and meditation was very hard for me because my heart was so closed. It was so closed. Um, and I was so stuck in my intellectual, mental world. And, uh, and, that's, and that's how I got into it. And, and guys, what I found was like when I meditated as a group, there's fierce power in meditating as a group. And, and that's, what, that's what got me my breakthrough. And, it, and then because of that, like, you get hooked. You get hooked. And, but the really easy way, because I know, you know, if you guys, if you guys watching classes stuff, you know, you, you're, you're a great thinker as well. You know, you, you like to think and use your brain. And, and Dr. Joe Dispenza, he, he's got all the thinking things so that, that 
will prevent you from meditation. Like he'll take all the boxes. He'll, he'll give you all the science evidence-based stuff. And, and that's kind of how I got into meditation. That's how I got into meditation. And, and Dr. Joe, he's got some free stuff on, on, on the YouTube. And, and I recommend like, that's a great place to start. Um, and like, like guys, the guys like Tony, Tony Robbins, he gets thousands of people come out and see him like every month. It's crazy. Um, and that's how I got into meditation. And, and the place that meditation has is it's checking in with you. So remember talking about knowing you and being you is like, well, how can you do any of that if you don't listen to you? Mm-hmm. And it's just that time of day where, remember I talked about the energy and emotion, the emotion to sitting there listening. It's just that, as in um, feelings will come up, give them time to pass through, listen to yourself because it sounds so new age, but like all the answers you got them within. Is in a, if you just listen to like you're you're smart as hell. If you're listening to this, you're smart as hell. And um, just listen to yourself. You have all the answers. They're, it's all there. You know what to do. Your subconscious is this crazy ass supercomputer. Just listen to it. You know it's 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 like a, like a crazy magic eight ball. Is in it's got all the answers. Um, and what it's like on another level, it's it's just. It's kind of like going to the well, you know, isn't it? You're just refilling and, uh, and you just top off, man. Whatever's, whatever you're missing, you just get topped up. Um, and that's it, you know. And, and do I meditate every day? No, no, I don't meditate every day. But, but I, I did for a long time. And, you know, I was doing four hours meditation even some days, you know. And some days I do nine, you know, as in, as in I've had those days. But the way to start, you get a candle in front of you. You two minutes. You look at the candle or you close your eyes in front of the candle for two minutes. And nobody does not have two minutes. They, you, there's not a person out there that, that exists. You know, even the president has two minutes to do this stuff, okay? So you, you, that's where you start. And, and, and then you, and, and you build it up. And, and um, Dr. Joe does the great guided meditation. So you just listen and he tells you what to do. And, but as in, start with... Like, a candle in two minutes. And if you don't want a candle, just start. Just do two minutes. Put two minutes on your iPhone. Um, and just, just, just get going because once you start listening to yourself, you will do that business that is aligned to you and you'll have fun in the business and, and you'll work things out. And like, you know, sometimes I'm in meditation and like great ideas for connecting to my audience come, you know, as in like, I'm, um, well, like one of my big things was like, I stopped saying re- only recently something target audience, you know, cause, cause what's a target, right? A, a target presupposes you're going to hit it with something. Right. And I don't, I think like it sounds, you know, airy fairy, but in my head, it makes sense. Like but that's violence. You know, it's like, I'm not trying to hit my audience. I, I love my audience and, and I pray for them. I pray for them every day because I cannot help all of them. I cannot help all of my audience. There's too many of them. Mm-hmm. I can, like even if I make an amazing huge company of maybe a few thousand of them a year, but there's there's millions of them, they're everywhere. And that and that came from that that reframe of seeing like as in like loving my audience, as in like and really getting in touch with them. That helped me create content. The guys like class reached out to me and I got to have this awesome interview with you guys because I did that. And and from connecting on that heart level. Um, yeah, the, so, 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 so like, Cass, have I made a good case for meditation here? Uh, I'm a- <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I, I love it. Uh, well, you, you have to convince me. I just hope that, you know, hope through this that we'll be able to convince more people. Uh, I started actually with two, 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 two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, uh, breathe different breathing exercises and meditation exercises, and then moved it to five, 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 and now I'm. I don't even know how long I do it now. I think my morning routine involves a 25 minute guided meditation from uh, the guy from Mind Valley, which I read <laughs> everything in there. And I do a deaf meditation as well. And then I do also briefing meditations uh, after that. So I'm, I'm pretty full. But what you're saying is true for me. Um, I came up with that. I came up with that uh, or with Fela's father through uh, meditation. Just asking that question, like, "Hey, um, I'm not happy. What should I do next?" And all those things. So, I'm really happy you shared that, uh, Patrick. I'm really happy you you've been on. We've been talking for an hour or almost an hour. Um, just you know, if people still have questions, if they want to get in touch with you, 
that want to follow you, what's what's the best way to do this? Um, guys, add me on Facebook. Is in a, I'm real friendly. Um, and c- c- class will, can probably put a link to that. Um, I've got a group. As in, um, if, if, if you uh, if you're health conscious, I got a group called the Flat Stomach Society. It's a Facebook group. Um, I answer questions and and I and I share share my thoughts on weight management and and how to um, just live a more balanced, you know, happier life. By you know, by because guys, if you don't have your health, you, you got nothing. You know, as in um, so, so yeah, as in the Flat Stomach Society. Um, that, that's that's my group. Is in please join me. Classes there, um, or just add me on Facebook and just just drop me a drop me a message, dude. Sounds great. I will definitely add the links to uh, the recorded videos that I share uh, wherever you you well, you can see it right below. Not right now, but later you will. So no problem. <laughs> um, anyway, again, thank you so much for being on. Looking forward to uh, to being in touch uh, over to the year two thousand nineteen. See where we going. Um, this beautiful year and uh, for everybody who's watching have a fantastic day uh, it's 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 another day and um, I know everybody keeps focusing I keep telling everybody and um, I think Patrick will, will say that as well he mentioned that you know be present stop thinking about 2019 and it's going to be the best year ever and I'm going to be here by the end of the year just think about you know how wonderful you can make today and then all those small steps will get you to your best year ever so That's it for today, and we will see each other very soon. Take care. Class, thank you for having me. See you later. Are you still meeting up with your friends now that you're a father? Kids making you stress out. You got no time for yourself to work out, read, relax. Can you still remember the time you were hanging out with your friends, feeling energetic, happy, and confident? Spending time together and talking about your life and your crazy dreams. You're feeling alone now, don't you? No one to share your challenges with. And you're just running around from one storm into the next. Well, it's time to change this now. Join me and the Brotherhood of Fearless Fathers to speak on a weekly basis with like-minded dads to crush your challenges. Face your fears with determination be held accountable and regain control of your life. If you want to become the hero your family needs you to be, then go to becomeafearlessfather.com slash brotherhood. Looking forward to seeing you on one of our next calls.